trying to help a fifth grader add fractions with different denominators and you're like, I don't even remember how to do this. Well, if so, this is an episode just for you and we're going to break that down right now on Math 345 Support. Hey everyone, my name is Sarah, but a lot of third, fourth, and fifth graders know me as Miss McCarthy. While I create a ton of math video lessons and resources for kids, I thought that it might be kind of cool to make some videos for you, for the parents, teachers, tutors, basically anyone looking to support a third, fourth, or fifth grader to make math make sense. Let's go ahead and dive right into today's episode and let me teach you how to add fractions with different denominators. All right, I'm excited about this episode today. Okay, so the uh, example that we're going to work on today is two thirds plus three fourths. Now we're going to start with the basics, okay? Because in fifth grade, you can get mixed numbers where we might have like two and two thirds plus one and three fourths, and that complicates it a little bit. So today we're just going to stick with the basics of having two fractions that are smaller or less than one. But they know, if you notice right away, they do have different denominators. Just as a refresher, the top numbers are called the numerator. You see that number on top? That's called the numerator. It describes the amount that is being considered. And when you jump down from the fraction bar denominator, it's the total number of equal parts. Sure, love me some fractions. Okay, so here's the thing. If we have, let's draw it out because we're here to make math make sense, right? So we have two parts of a whole. Hey everybody, it is actually a new day. It is the next day that I'm recording this. So I'm sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and where we left off, that's where I'm gonna pick up. There might be a little bit of background noise. I'm There's somebody working on something nearby and they've been working all day, but I wanna make sure I get this out to you. So I'll see if I can edit it out, but if not, sorry. Here we go. So we were saying that we're gonna go ahead and model these two. So what, right now we have two thirds, two thirds. So that's the total number of equal parts. We break that in. And I know that we are adding fractions here, but I just want this to make sense for you. The next one is three fourths, so let's break it into fourths. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's shade in two. It describes the amount that is being considered. All right, two parts. And then here we have three fourths. Now, because these are broken into different size pieces, we can't just add them together yet. They can be added, but we have to do some, some conversions with them, okay? We have to convert these into fractions that have the same denominator. So when you're adding fractions, you need to make sure that you have the same denominator. And here's what I tell students. When you add or subtract, your denoms must match, your denominators. When you add or subtract fractions, your denominators must match. So what I'm gonna do is leave these models hanging out here. And what we're gonna do is find the least common multiple, I'm sorry, we call this LCD, the least common denominator. The least common denominator or the least common multiple are the same thing, but because we're talking about denominators, let's call them least common denominators. Okay, we've got three and we have the denominator of four. We're going to count by threes and count by fours until we get the same number. So three, three, six, nine, 12. Counting by threes, we get to 12. I can keep going 15. 18. Now let's work with the fours and see if we have a match. We have four, eight, 12. Er, we can stop right there because we have 12 right here and 12 right there. This is the least common denominator or the lowest common denominator. So now what we're going to do is rewrite our fractions using a denominator of 12. Okay. Before we even mess with this again. Let's go back to our model. So we originally had thirds right here, right? And now we need to make them into 12 twelfths. So three times what will give us 12? Three times four, right? Which means that now we need to cut this four times to get it into twelfths. So I do that going sideways. Half and then Boom, all right, now we have 12ths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And when we do that, same on the bottom, same on the top, that would be eight, which makes sense because when we cut this into 12 equal parts, we had eight equal parts there. So two thirds is equivalent to eight twelfths. Same thing with three fourths. So how do we get from four 
to 12. Well, it was 4, 8, 12, so times 3. Times 3 on the bottom, times 3 on the top, which means that 3 times 3 is 9. So if we cut this 3 times, into one, two, three. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve equal parts. And guess what? Nine of them are shaded in. Okay, so now I know they don't look like they're equal parts, but they're both holes that are broken into 12 equal parts. And technically we could add them now. So that would be how many total pieces? Well, it's broken into twelfths. And if we were to count each of them, that would be eight parts plus nine parts, which equals 17 parts. So 17 twelfths. Here's the thing. When I am teaching fifth graders, I do spend a little bit of time in the beginning with visual models when I'm in the classroom. However, I do try to shift to the computation part and have them practice that because a lot of times they're like, okay, that makes sense. Now let me just focus on computation, right? So this is 17 twelfths. All right, 17 twelfths, you notice that our numerator is greater, right? Which means that we have more than one whole. We have a fraction here that's greater than one whole, so we can turn it into a mixed number. I'm gonna show you how to do that both with the visual and using computation. So here I have one, two, three, four spaces that need to be filled in, and then it will be considered one whole. So if I were to do this, one, two, three, four, and move those here, right? Then I have one whole thing shaded in, or I could just shade it. Okay. And then I would have one, two, three, four, five pieces left over. So one and five twelfths. So 17 twelfths is equivalent to one and five twelfths. That's how you can represent it using a visual model. But you can also just go ahead and divide that out because 17 over 12 is the same thing as 17 divided by 12, which looks like this. And then you just follow your division steps, which can be another episode. So 12 goes into 17 one time. One times 12 is 12. We subtract and then we get five, which is our remainder. I teach students that here we, with the remainder, we started from the bottom, now we're here on top. And 12 is our numerator, I'm sorry, our denominator. So that's another way to show it there. Okay, I know that may have seemed like a lot. Hopefully that clicked for you. And um, I wanna go ahead and point you in the direction of some more videos if you're like, ugh, I understand what you did, but I need to see a couple more examples. On my website, McCarthyMathAcademy.com, which is in the links below, you can grab a free trial to McCarthy Math 155. And there are a ton of videos. I have a whole fractions unit with adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing with fractions for fifth grade. There's a, I think it's the biggest unit there because we it takes a lot of practice for students to understand the different operations. So adding is one of them. We also subtract, we multiply, we divide, and you do different things with all of them. It's a step-by-step, -step, daily, high-energy, consistent, jam-packed program. It is built for students, but you can also learn as a parent, a teacher, a tutor. I have lots of teachers all the time saying, oh my gosh, I learned so much from these episodes. So they are there for you. Um, totally check it out for free for seven days. Grab that free trial. Now I'm trying to do these weekly. This is the fifth grade episode. So I'll drop a new fifth grade episode next week. If you have any skills that you would like for me to work on, you can just, you know, you can comment below. You can send me an email at McCarthyMathAcademy at gmail.com. You can Instagram, Facebook message me. I'm at McCarthy Math Academy there. All those links are below. But if you're having some issues, send me that problem. Maybe it'll show up in one of the episodes, all right? Okay, okay, everybody. Before we go, I just wanna remind you that you, yes, you were born for a purpose. You matter and what you choose to do with your life matters too. So go out there and change the world in your own special way. And I will see you all next time.